Now, hey everybody, it is Mrs. Holly, and I want to go over your very first Enduring Issues essay. So this is in your workbook and we'll work on it as we go along, but I wanna just go over a few of the major ideas and easy ways to get it done. What you're gonna see on the Regents exam is this part down here. It will always say, this box will always be there. It'll say extended essay. I put enduring issue human environment interaction only because this is our first one and I didn't want you to have to go and figure out which enduring, enduring issue to use. So here's what you will always see except for this part. Okay, it says an enduring issue is a challenge or problem that has been debated or discussed across time. An enduring issue is one that many societies have attempted to address with varying degrees of success. I'm not really a big humongous fan of that, but I'll show you what I do to get better wording on this. So it says in your essay, you have to identify and define the issue. And in this case, we are using human environment interaction raised by this set of documents. Using your knowledge of social studies and evidence from the documents, you're going to argue why the issue is significant and how it either has endured or changed across time. Remember, an issue is significant if it affects a lot of people and has lasted a long time. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So it says, be sure to identify the issue based on a historically accurate interpretation of at least three documents. They will always give you five. You must use at least three of them. Can you use more? Yep, you sure can. Do I recommend that right now? Nope, I sure don't. Let's stick with three from now till we get better at this. So you have to define the issue using evidence from three documents. You have to argue that it's a significant issue that has endured by showing how it has affected people or how it's been affected by people and how it's either continued to be an issue or whether it changed over time. And you're gonna use a lot of outside information from what you've learned and evidence from the document. Okay, so here's our first document. This is a Paleolithic tribe. We know it's Paleolithic because where are they living? They're living in a cave, right? And this man over here is making a cave painting, right? And these men over here are making some kind of tools. I can't tell if they're making arrows and stuff, but they're definitely making tools of some kind. These women here are working on an animal skin. They're probably preparing it to make a blanket or make clothing. Um, here's a young child they're looking after. So this is definitely a Paleolithic scene. Oop. Now, document two says it is a Sumerian village. Oh, hold on, sorry about that. It is a Sumerian village. So I know that Sumer was a, a location in Mesopotamia, but even if you, I didn't know that, I can see that these homes here and here are so much bigger than the ones we saw when we looked at other Paleolithic drawings. Um, these are permanent homes. So you've got permanent dwellings and look, they've got cows. They've got some other animals over here. They've got some over here. What do they use cows for? Okay, milk and food, okay, even clothing. You've got Definitely a Sumerian, a, a uh, Neolithic scene going on here. Okay, here are Sumerian fields in Mesopotamia. 
So here are the rows of crops right there. And here are irrigation ditches in between the rows of crops. Hmm, I'm gonna think about that. We'll get back to that. Here we have farming in ancient China. Well, this looks pretty cool. This is a mountain, you can tell, cause here's a mountain here. There's mountains in the background. And this is showing you terrace farming. All right, so ancient Chinese developed the technique of terrace farming. So let's move on. Our last one has some text as well as a picture. It says the shaduf was a hand operated device for lifting water invented in ancient times and is still used in India, Egypt, and some other countries to irrigate land. Typically, it consists of a long tapering, nearly horizontal pole mounted like a seesaw. And this is actually a photograph of an Egyptian shaduf in 1911. Okay, and here they have rigged it and there it enables them to dip this bucket way down in that hole to get water and more easily lift up heavy things of water. All right, so you're thinking to yourself, Mrs. Wally, that's all fine and wonderful, but what the heck do I do with all of this? All right, the first thing you need to do is figure out what the enduring issue is. And in this case, I already told you, it's human environment interaction. So what I did is I looked at each document and on the side, I just inserted a text box and I listed anything and everything I know about these scenes. So for example, a Paleolithic tribe, I know that Paleolithic people lived in small groups in order to maximize the food resources. I know they were nomadic, that they traveled from place to place looking for food resources. So therefore they lived in temporary shelters like caves and huts that were made out of the material around them. Okay, that's human environment interaction. We know that men hunted and made tools and made cave paintings like this guy. And women gathered nuts, berries, seed, water, and water. That shows them interacting with the environment although it's not shown in this picture. They made clothes and blankets, cooked and cared for the children. Okay, so I know a lot about this document, okay? Now, document two, the Sumerian village. Well, I know Sumer was a city-state in Mesopotamia, okay? I know that the Sumerians learned to farm and domesticate animals. See these cows and there's some, looks like almost like goats and that looks like a goose to me, but it's probably not. I don't know. Um, but they were able to farm and domesticate animals, tame them so that they could use them for food and help them with their work. I know they built permanent homes out of the available material in the environment. Okay, so that's human environment interaction as well. All right, document three, the Sumerian fields. All right, first thing I know is that Mesopotamia means the land between the rivers. I know that it's also called the Fertile Crescent. I also know that it's called the Cradle of Civilization because that's one of the very first places where early civilizations developed. All right, and I also know that this is all made up of the land between the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers, okay? All right, what else do I know? Well, I know that those rivers flooded at least once a year, and that would bring silt up to the top of the land. It would deposit on the, on the shore, and that that silt was really good to bring to your crops for farming because you don't want to put your crops right next to your river because then if the river floods, your crops get destroyed. So they had to come up with a way to get the water to your, their crops without ruining them um, and without having them too close to the river. So what did they do? They dug irrigation ditches. The Sumerians were the first 
to do this. They dug irrigation ditches to carry water from the rivers to the crops. This enabled them to control flooding and ensured that their crops would survive. Okay, now document four, the farming in ancient China. Okay, I know that the ancient Chinese settled in the Yellow River Valley in China. I know the Yellow River is called China's sorrow because when it floods, it destroys crops and homes and can kill people as well and animals. I know that only 10% of the land in the Yellow River Valley was farmable because it was so mountainous. So how did the ancient Chinese overcome this problem? Well, they dug terraces into the sides of the mountain. These were usually man high, the height of an adult male. They would store them up, you know, build them up with rocks from the ground that they dig up, making a wall. And then because it's on the side of a mountain, water would, when it rains and if there's snow when it melts, will come dripping down, flowing down into each terrace. So they would plant crops like rice in these terraces because rice grows in the water. And that enabled them to grow enough food to survive. So that's really, really, really cool. All right, our last one, the Shadoof, the Egyptian Shadoof. So I already read this and I looked at the picture. So what do I know? I know that even though um, the Egyptians lived in a dry desert-like climate, well, it was a desert, <laughs> the Shadoof was what allowed them to grow crops like barley and wheat. And that the Shadoof was made using a lever to easily lift the water from the river up to the top here, up to the land, so that they could bring the water to their crops. Now, what I liked about this one is that it included a date, and I noticed that the date was 1911, and that this is a photograph. So I made a note to myself that I could use this document to show that humans continue to modify or adapt to their environment. This is gonna be my document three for my essay. So I made a note for myself so I don't forget because I forget everything. All right, my friends, now we're gonna take a look at the organizer here. And I put it over here because I'm gonna show you the introduction. So let me just move this out of the way first. All right, this is the organizer that we are going to use all year for our Enduring Issues essays. This is what the 10th grade teachers use. So what they've done and what we've done is divided it up into five paragraphs. And obviously your first one is going to be your introduction and your last one is going to be your conclusion. And it says along the size to or side to organize your documents in chronological order. So you go from oldest document to newest document. So we're going to start with the introduction. So the first thing they ask you to do is define the enduring issue. All right, let me pull up actually, because I didn't think of it. Let me pull up the definitions. La 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 la, the definitions of enduring issues. Enduring issue stuff. That's my folder, enduring issue stuff, because, you know, stuff. And you know how much I love stuff. All right, here it is. And I'm going to give you this so you don't have to worry. Okay, so. Our enduring issue is human environment interaction, which is down here. I want to focus on this. See, I like to sing. Maybe not that big. I'll get 50%. So it says human environment interaction is the ways in which humans affect the world around them or are affected by the world around them. And then down below, I listed topics that go along with it. And look, Neolithic Revolution is in there, so fine. So we're going to first define the enduring issue. So that's right there. So you don't have to come up with your own definition. 
you're going to, well, we've already done this step. We know that it relates to the three documents we're going to use. And then our last sentence is kind of a transition sentence into our first paragraph, a second paragraph. So it says, this issue can be seen, blah, 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 blah. Okay, then you jump to paragraph two, where you're going to either state the geographic and or historical context for this document. You can do both. It's outside information, so it does nothing but help your grade. Okay, then you're going to explain the issue using the information from the document in your own words. So causes, effects, um, and then the continuity. You need a transition sentence into paragraph three. So you could say this issue is also seen in. Now, sometimes we want to show that issues change over time. So you could say this issue was different in. But in this one, we're going to show continuity. So we're going to use this issue is also seen in. And then you're going to describe your uh, location of your second document. Okay, so your second document. Then you do the same thing as you did for the first one. You explain what's going on in the document. You put it into context. And then you explain the issue. So you're going to talk about how in that document, um, human environment interaction is, you know, explained. So you're going to explain why they had to interact with the environment. So what the problems were, how they fixed it, and whether that had positive or negative effects. Okay, then again, another transition sentence into your fourth paragraph for your third document. And we're going to use this one also. This issue is also seen in, and that's where we're going to use our document three. Or is it document three? Document, whatever. We'll get back to that. Okay, so I made a note. See, I told you I'd forget. So then the last document, again, that's our most current one, the photograph from, I think that's from 1911. So we're going to, again, set the context because it's in Egypt. So it's a desert, blah, 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 no water. Okay, how they solved the problem and then the positive effects. And then just another one to show that it has continued throughout time, in which case you can say this issue is also seen in modern day India and Egypt as the use of the shadow continues to this day. And then your last, con your last paragraph is your conclusion. So you're gonna restate the enduring issue and its definition, and again, that's over here. You're going to restate your main ideas, how various societies such as the Sumerians and the ancient Chinese and the ancient Egyptians used different tactics to deal with the environment, such as irrigation and blah, blah, blah. And then how it continues to have an impact or be impacted by people in global history. Okay, so that's going to lead us. We're going to now work on our actual essay. Okay, so get ready. Here's where we get into the actual writing of the essay. And this is going to be the same no matter what essay you're writing about. Okay? This is the beginning I use in every single one of my Enduring Issues essay. Every single one. So by the end of the year, I've memorized it. And I know how to write it. It says, an enduring issue is an issue that exists across time. It also affects many people. Because remember, those are the two qualifications to be an enduring issue. You have to affect a lot of people and endure over a long period of time. I then add, and those effects, whether positive or negative, are long lasting. So here's where I'm going to earn points in my essay for having analysis, okay? Because I'm going to address whether those effects were positive or negative. Nowhere does it say you have to do this, but this is how you get a perfect score, okay? It shows analysis. So what I do first, and this is still in my introduction, I restate the issue. A significant enduring issue is human environment interaction. Anything that's in red is 
what I'm writing in my new essay. Everything in black is what you should always write. And you're just gonna copy that over and over and over again. So here we've chosen human environment interaction. The enduring issue of human environment, oops, I left out interaction, it should say interaction, is defined as, and then I took the definition that I have that I will show you, it's defined as the ways in which humans affect the world around them or are affected by the world around them. Okay, that's the definition that you would always use for human environment interaction, okay? That, so I, I will give you these so you don't have to come up with this definition. Then my last sentence is like a transition sentence to lead us into our enduring issues. So this issue can be seen, and then I go, in the first River Valley civilizations, such as Mesopotamia, China, and Egypt, because those are the three areas that I chose to write about, as people had to adapt to and or modify their environment in order to survive. Okay? So this you're always gonna write, this you're always gonna write. I'm gonna give you the definition so you'll be able to write it. So all you really have to do is make a transition sentence of your own. See how easy that introduction was? It is so easy. All right, my second paragraph. Now I've already gone through and I've chosen which documents I want to use. I'm going to use document three first because the Sumerians were one of the oldest of the River Valley civilizations. So what I have to do is give some outside information. I have to show the environment and what the problem was and how they overcame it. So I wrote, according to document three, the Sumerians in Mesopotamia, the lands surrounding the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, that's my outside information, were forced to modify their environment in order to survive. Okay, here's more outside information. Once people learned how to farm, they needed to be able to supply their crops with the water they needed to grow. The Sumerians developed the very first irrigation systems. That comes right from document three. Well, I know this, this is outside information, but we're using document three because that's what's shown. The Sumerians dug irrigation ditches that carried water to their fields, which not only allowed the food to grow, but even allowed for a surplus of food. That means they had more food that, than they actually needed. With a food surplus, the population would grow and job specialization would begin. I should have said this had a positive impact on the people in Sumer. I didn't, but I should have. I should have included it right in here somewhere. Allowed for a surplus of food. This had a positive impact on the people because as the food supply grew, the population grew and job specialization would begin. Okay, now I need a transition sentence to my next document. So I decided I would use terrace farming in China. So the need to modify their environment continued to be an issue as seen in ancient China. Okay, so really all, only this stuff is new. Okay, and then I have a transition sentence. Always, always, always have a transition sentence, please. Okay. So now I'm going to use terrace farming. And I just change up the wording a little bit. So it says human environment interaction is also evident in document number, and I put four. For example, and here's how I'm using the document and my outside information. In ancient China, along the Yellow River, that's outside information, the land was very mountainous. In fact, only 10% of the land was flat enough on which to farm. Okay, so there's our problem. And here's how they overcame the problem. The ancient Chinese overcame this problem by inventing terrace farming. These people learned how to dig terraces into the sides of the mountains, 
creating huge flat terraces on which to farm. They were constructed to maximize the waterfall from rains in order to water their crops, typically different types of rice. Okay, so that's the problem. This is how they had to adapt their environment. Okay, now I need one more. I have to use at least three documents. So I said the issue of having to modify one's environment can also be seen in ancient Egypt, where the climate made it necessary to be able to bring water from the river up to the crops. So that's a transition sentence for my next paragraph. Okay, human environment interaction has continued over time. Okay, it has continued over time. That's why I'm using this document. Okay, according to document five, this issue continues as shown by, and here's where I bring in the document, as shown by the fact that people in modern day Egypt and other countries still utilize the same technology developed in the ancient river valley civilizations. In Egypt, along the Nile River, outside information, because of the dry desert climate, outside information, people needed to have enough water to bring to their crops. Okay, also outside information. These people invented a hand-operated device called the shaduf that was designed to lift water from the river and more easily bring it to their crops, right? It's shown in the document, but it's not explained how it works. In this case, the invention of the shaduf had a positive effect on the people living along the Nile River. Without the shaduf, the crops would have died and the people would have starved. And here's where I show that it continues over time. People in places such as Egypt and India continue to use the shaduf to bring precious water to their crops. Okay. So those are my three documents. I have used them. I have explained the positive effect of each, and now I need to write a conclusion. So we're going to redefine the issue. So as discussed, the enduring issue of human environment interaction has played an important role in world history. This issue has affected people in many ways such as, so again, the wording in black is the same wording you're going to use every single time. You just have to include your information from the essay in each one. So this issue has affected many people in many ways, such as allowing those in the ancient river valley civilizations to adapt to their climate and farm enough to feed their people. They did this by creating irrigation systems, terrace farming, and inventions such as the shaduf. Okay, and here's, I'm just throwing in the lasted over time. Over time, this issue continued as illustrated by the fact that people around the world continue to utilize irrigation systems, terrace farming, and even ancient inventions such as the shaduf to grow enough food to survive. Now, sometimes, you won't be able to say this issue has continued. Sometimes the issue changes over time, in which case you will modify this. This issue has changed as shown by or as illustrated by. Okay, so this is really a very simple process. It's just practice. And the more we practice the skill of writing these essays, the better at it you will get. I'm going to give you the organizers. I'm going to give you the definitions so you won't have to worry about coming up with those on your own. So really, you just need to be able to fill in the missing information. And you will be able to do this task. So I expect that you are going to write your own enduring issue on this very same topic. You are not going to copy what I have done. You can use similar information and add to it or change it, but do not copy mine because I won't give you credit for that. All I did here was show you, I have showed you how to do the process.
Okay, so you're gonna go through those five documents. You're gonna pick the three that you wanna use. I guess I would probably recommend using that Shadoof one for your showing how it continues over time. But otherwise you don't have to use those same first two that I did. All right, but follow the format. And remember, you can go back through this screencast to you know go through parts stop them so you can get the the wording correct with the stuff that you're always going to keep the same all right and use this screencast throughout the year to help you write your enduring issues essays all right i am really proud of you for keeping up with me here don't worry about these essays we will do them together and we will practice them all year all right so until next time my friends have a great day